within this required practical, what you should be aiming to achieve is to grow, is to grow a colony of bacteria, a colony of bacteria, a colony of bacteria without being contaminated, without being contaminated. Now, there's two features of that that you really should be aiming for. One is to try and isolate a colony, and two is to ensure it doesn't get contaminated. So in terms of isolating the colony, I'm gonna show you a method uh, of which you're actually gonna prepare your agar plate, which is called streaking, streaking to isolate. And I'm gonna show you that in detail in a few moments time. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you the, the general setup of the practical, and I'm gonna show you some anti-contamination processes that I'd like you to follow. So first things first, let me get my words out. First things first, just notice we've got hand wash there. Notice we've got our antibacterial spray. Make sure that your bench is clean. Make sure that your hands are clean. And effectively at that point, we can begin to undertake this experiment. We've also got our Bunsen in our working area. We'll probably start it on the yellow flame, but we will switch it to the blue flame and you'll see why in a second. And that is potentially going to kill off some airborne bacteria as well in the immediate environment. Now, all that being understood and assuming we have cleaned as we need to, we are gonna undertake the following process. We are gonna take our inoculating loop and we are gonna pick it up. We're gonna take it over to our flame and we are gonna place the end of the loop or the loop itself in the hot part of the flame. Once and the reason for that, by the way, is to, is to kill off any bacteria, to sterilize the loop. Once we've done that, we're gonna let that loop cool off just slightly. Once cooled down, we're gonna take the loop, we're gonna pass it into our bacterial culture, and we are then gonna lift the lid on our Petri dish, because the lid's on at this point. We're gonna lift the, the lid as little as possible and start to streak our agar plate the details of how we streak, which I'll go over in just a few moments time. Now, a couple of other things that I would really highlight for you here. First of all, just repeat the lid is on the Petri dish, open it as little as possible. Secondly, once we have streaked the plate, more details in a second, what you're gonna do is you're gonna tape the, you're gonna tape the, the, the lid closed and you're gonna make sure that your lid is labeled. And once it goes in to the incubator, two things are gonna happen. We just make that slightly smaller. Two things are gonna happen once it's in this incubator. One is you're gonna flip this so that it's upside down. You must do that, otherwise moisture from the lid could fall onto the agar plate, which is not what we want. And secondly, we are gonna incubate at approximately 25 degrees Celsius, or certainly no higher than 25 degrees. And the reason we're gonna do that is any warmer, and we could be in we could be in sort of the realms of developing bacteria or growing bacteria which are comfortable at body temperature, and that's not what we wanna be doing in a school. So a couple of things that are important there for you to remember. So those are some important points. By the way, when I said taping, here's our tape here. Look, when I said taping, we don't seal the lid closed, we tape. Uh, we, to, to prevent any larger uh, molecules getting in there, but we do want air to be able to pass over the agar, otherwise we'll develop an anaerobic type pathogen, an anaerobic type bacteria, and those can be relatively dangerous. So, there were, so it, it's not sealed, it's just taped. Okay, so be aware of those things. Now, with all that understood, what I wanna do now is I really wanna look at the details of our streaking to isolate technique. So what we've got here is our, you know, in the middle of that process I just showed you, this is our Petri dish from a bird's eye view. So this is if we're looking straight down and it's completely clear. We're, it's, we're actually, I guess, looking through the lid ultimately. So what we do is we would take our lid just off so we could get the inoculating loop just inside, or take it off completely. And we're gonna identify zone one of our agar plate. And with zone one, imagine my pen tip is the inoculating loop. We are gonna, we're gonna have put it through the flame, we're gonna have collected our, our bacteria, and we're now gonna streak the plate. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna provide a sort of a zigzag streak with the inoculating loop, something like that. Okay, so there's my zone one. In fact, let me, uh, let me just change that a second. Uh, I'll draw that on for you again. Here's our zone one, okay, so here's our zone one. I basically drew that on the wrong layer, folks. So when I add an image over the top of this in a second, we won't be able, we'll still see the lines. So 
we've got zone one there. Now, we take our inoculating loop, imagine my pen tip is that, and we now put it back through the flame to sterilize the inoculating loop again. Okay, so we sterilize again. Now, you might be expecting me to say, look, now we put in the culture. No, we don't do that. We sterilize and we go straight back to the uh, Petri dish. Now, can we all agree that on my inoculating loop now, there are no bacteria? So if I start wiping here, there's nothing on the end of my loop. So what we do instead is we identify what we're gonna call zone two. And with zone two, we start here, we drag it through zone one, and we begin to streak. Maybe we end the streak something like there. Now, would you agree with... That's a bit like a fork, isn't it? If Would you agree with me that by dragging through zone one here, look, I have picked up some of the bacteria from zone one, and I'm now dragging it and streaking it through zone two. And the reason we do that is because in zone, zone one, we're going to have tons of bacteria there. In zone two, we're going to have far less. Would you agree? Because we're picking up from here. We have far less bacteria. Again, we go back to the flame, we sterilize, we come back to our plate, we identify, let's call zone three, we identify zone three, which we normally do, by the way, by actually rotating the plate rather than anything else. And this time with zone three, we pass through zone two, and we streak. And we might finish somewhere like there. Now, the idea of this is that zone one, uh, sorry, zone three, has fewer examples of the bacteria than zone two, and zone two has fewer examples than zone one. And the reason we do that is because in zone three, we want to get isolated individual bacteria, one individual bacterium, for example, and that can grow into a colony. And if we do it well enough, after it's been incubated, we might expect to see something like this. So here, look, in zone one, if this was zone one here, if this was zone one here, if this was zone one here, you see there's tons of bacteria here. If this is zone two here, there are fewer bacteria and some examples of individual colonies, but certainly zone three over here, look, we've literally got individual colonies. Now, bear, let's, let's take this one here. Let's take this one here, okay? This is an individual colony. And I wanna be really clear here, that individual colony has grown from one single bacterium. So that one bacterium has, has divided through binary fission and has produced that colony from one single individual prokaryotic bacterial cell. And that, if we go back to here, is what I would like you to try and aim to achieve. Now, one other thing I just add at this point, if you get some kind of weird looking, I don't know, over here you get this and over here you get this. If you get some bacteria with a completely different morphology or structure, shape, color, what that means is the, the plate has become contaminated. Okay, so in that sense, you can see how we started. Everything was kind of like this yellow, creamy color, all the same, roughly the same shape, form, size, and so on. That means that we haven't got contamination. If we get lots of different kind of morphology or structures, then that's, that's evidence of, um, of contamination and ultimately what we want to avoid. So let's address how our bacteria actually split and replicate. And we've already mentioned that they achieve this through a process we refer to as binary fission. Binary fission. Now, one thing I'd just like to draw to your attention is that this is not the same as mitosis. It is not mitosis. Now, with our prokaryotic bacterial cells, of course, we have no nucleus, and therefore we have no nucleus to split. And for that reason, binary fission differs from mitosis because mitosis in, involves the process of the nucleus splitting. So here, it's a slightly different concept. So what I would like to introduce you to though, is that as our bacterium develops in its nutrient-rich environment in the agar jelly, what we're gonna see ultimately is that the bacterium grows, this single bacterium, it grows. And you'll see here that it seems to be sort of starting to, starting to prepare to be split starting to prepare to be split there because we see that one DNA loop and a bunch of plasmids and one DNA loop and a bunch of plasmids on this side separate onto either side of the cell here. But the other thing is just notice it's bigger. Once we are, once the bacterium is prepared to do so, it will then undertake that process of binary fission here, binary fission like that will be undertaken. And we get here, the production of completely identical replica, what we might want to refer to as daughter cells. 
And just to be clear about that, they are absolutely identical to the original bacterium. Okay, now, of course, it's worth saying that this is one replication. This one will replicate again and we'll end up with two further bacterium, bacteria, sorry, these will split again and so on. So therefore it becomes interesting to think about what the average replication rates for these bacteria are. Now where life gets really interesting is where we look at what we describe as the average replication rates. So let me just introduce you to this concept, average replication rate. So let me introduce you to this. Let's take an E. coli bacterium, okay? and Every E. coli bacterium, or the, the, the one I'm working with at least, it takes 20 minutes to go from one bacterium to two bacteria. So it replicates, or its average replication rate is every 20 minutes. Now what we want to do here is we want to calculate, we want to calculate how many examples of the bacteria we would have calculate replication in eight hours. And you can choose a different period of time if you want, and you can practice this in any way you want. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna imagine that we've had our E. coli single bacterium eight hours after eight hours, how many examples of the bacteria would we expect there to be? And of course, what we've gotta do first of all is figure out how many 20 minutes are in eight hours. And there's, there's three 20 minutes in every hour. So it's eight times three equals 24. So we have got 24 cycles of replication. So what we can do then is we can calculate that. We can say, look, here's our original bacterium, and we're gonna multiply that by two, because of course we multiply it by two because it splits into two each 20 minutes. And we're gonna repeat that 24 times. So it's as if we're saying one times two is two, two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, 16 times two is 32, 32 times two is 64, and so on and so on and so on. How, what number do we get to if we repeat that 24 times? And feel free to calculate this on your calculators, but I'll just go the fast route. This gets after 24 replications, we get to a number which is 16,777,200 and 16 different bacteria. Okay, well, I mean different, they're, they're the same uh, colony of bacteria, but um, we've got nearly 17 million of them, okay? Now, this is a big number, and we could simply answer in this way, but what I would encourage you to do is can you convert this number into standard form? If I'm gonna write standard form, I probably should could spell it correctly with an R in and everything. Standard form standard form okay and the the kind of the guidelines i want you to think about here with standard form is we want to get the number down so it's a number between one and ten okay we want to make basically to make it a more manageable number and the easiest way that we can do this if we imagine that the decimal point well not imagine the decimal point is actually there we want to somehow get that decimal point moved to the left so that the number we are left with is between one and ten so in this case i need to bump it up all of these spaces so that we get our decimal point to here, 1.677 and so on. Now, in order to do that, we have to write it in the following format. We're gonna write one, let me use the same colors, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6. Now, I could just write the whole thing at 772 or six, but I'm gonna do some rounding. I'm gonna round it to 1.68. Okay, so I'm rounding up in that case. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna write it in the following way, times 10, okay, 1.6 times 10. And now I'm gonna count how many jumps I had, which in my case is six, seven to the seventh. Okay, 1.68 times 10 to the seven. And this therefore is a much more manageable way of writing this big number. Now, in order just to finish off this entire tutorial, just want to bring to your attention some of the uh, terminology which we've used here. Just make sure you're comfortable with it. Inoculatingly, Bunsen burner, I'm sure. Petri dish, agar, liquid broth, which is poured and set into agar jelly. The bacterial culture, which of course we are used to do uh, the first zone one streaking. The streaking to isolate technique, I did it in three zones. So there are actually some that, that involve four. A colony which is growing from one single bacterium. Binary fission, the other method by which um, back to prokaryotic cells, bacterial cells, split and form two exact replica cells. Population, 
often a very large number, as you've just seen in that standard form, of the entire bacteria. Average replication rate, the E. coli, was 20 minutes. Standard form we've just looked at. And as we mentioned before, the binary fission is different to mitosis, which we'll look at in future tutorials.